All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Helen. Uh, I'm at Destination OG. Uh, Chris Toda brought the car up so we could shoot some videos on it while I was here this week. I'm actually going to the uh, GT Smokies, uh, the Porsche event with all my buddies. I don't have a GT car because mine is now in production. My G80 and my uh, GT3 are in production, which I'm freaking out a little bit because that means I'm going to pay for them both at the same time. Uh, so hopefully this giveaway that we're doing on this M2 will do really well so I can um, get some money back. Uh, I paid cash for this car and then spent you know, a bunch of money on the modifications. So I'm hoping that uh, this giveaway, which will start, once it start? The 24th, I believe, or 25th, I think. We, we had to push it 10 days. It was supposed to start the 15th, but you have to do all kinds of legal stuff uh, to get uh, set up for it and um, uh, we just didn't get it in in time. It just miscommunication on, uh, on the back end of, uh, of OG. And so uh, it's gonna run from the, I believe the 24th of this month through, um, so this video will be up in a couple days or, uh, so and it'll be up in about six or seven, eight days, something like that. And uh, what you do is you'll go to obsessedgarage.com. There'll be all kinds of banner images and links to the giveaway. You go to the giveaway page, every five bucks you spend, you get an entry. Um, I think I, what did I pay for this car? 107, 107, $107,500 for this thing. Uh, and then um, I probably spent, let's see, the brakes were 11. Um, so probably another 25 grand, 30 grand. So, you know, somewhere in the 130 to 140 range is what this car would cost to get it to where it's at here. Um, oh, well, I'll probably add all that stuff up so you get an idea. Um, I think we're going to value it for the giveaway at MSRP. So, uh, you know, whatever the MSRP price, this is like 85 or 86,000 or something like that. So we're going to be giving this thing away and it's freaking incredible. So it needs to get washed. Uh, it drove up here right now. It has 47, 4,800 miles on it. It'll have another, you know, four or five hundred by the time we uh, by the time we give it away. So it'll be a, you know, less than six thousand mile car. So this is the newest car, uh, newest, nicest, least mileage car I've ever given away. What is that little scratch there? Maybe it's just some dirt. No, well, that's a scratch. Oh, that's one of the PPF lines. Anyway, I got to stop looking, looking too deeply. So uh, let's wash the thing. I'll stop yapping at you and um, let's hang out here this afternoon in amazing, this amazing garage. I mean, I just love how much, and I've got what, 10 feet, 15 feet. So I've got all this room and then there's a floor drain. So don't get too concerned uh, and no, the cabinets don't get wet. The cabinets are 20 feet away. Um, and uh, we have a air conditioner in here, so I've got the Mitsubishi running. And, um, you know, lots of people, you can wash in your garage, no issue. Uh, the biggest issue with washing in the garage is if you have central air, um, you don't want mold and stuff getting up into your ducts. So you'd want a separate ducting system or a duct list like what I have would be my recommendation. But the walls aren't going to get wet. Um, everything, everything here is a piece of cake. So let's do our wheels first. Yeah, like we normally do. And we get set up to wash. I really like the structure having this little setup here. In a perfect world, you'd have a sink. Um, but there was no plumbing here for a sink. Uh, so I couldn't do a sink. Uh, the drain on this actually runs off down to the side of the house. So it doesn't run to the sewer. Um, so that's not an option to put a to put a you know a drain in here you know at least a legal drain so we are going to um we don't have a sink in here so if i ever needed a sink i just have to walk inside of the laundry room or the kitchen or something like that but um because i have the bucket filler i don't really need it let me get my stool so in here, we decided not to do a boom pole just so people could experience the difference. Most people aren't gonna do a boom pole in their garage. Uh, and so I decided to set it up this way. So I wanted people to be able to experience, I mean, this would be a more likely scenario that you would get. I need to send a PP plug here. That if you were gonna build your garage, you would probably do a hose reel like this. 
versus doing a, a boom pole. So I put the boom pole outside and the hose reel inside so you, people could get a, an idea what the experience was like. And then I just have a valve here where I can switch between indoor and outdoor. It's nice enough today that I could go, go wash outdoors, but it's also nice to wash in the air conditioning. Much more chill. So we were washing yesterday. A couple days ago, we washed the Turo car. Side. So just switch the valve. There we go. It's awesome having a floor drain. Having this thing set up this way. It's great. I need to make a custom osmotic holder. Or maybe we'd have put something in the bottom of it because when you put this in here. It's too, sh this, the new wand is without the nozzle on, it's a little too short. That Then you gotta fish it out of there, and that's no good. So deanniner's DNI, off, this is good. Let's get our wheel. We're working on the adhesive. See, um, the Tarex leaches through the bottle, and so it makes the, makes the label come off. It's really weird. And so we need some, we're testing some kind of adhesives to help with that. But all the others are holding up really nicely. Jeff did a good job of installing all of those. So, looking good. All right, let's do the wheels. Let me stop chatting. Oh yeah, it's nice. I got the, I think this is the first time, maybe second time I washed it since the wheels are now coated. And are these floating? Yeah, I did floating caps. The wheels are coated and the, um, uh, the carpet ceramics, so way better. So the key with carpet ceramics is not so much the heavy cleaning. You could probably just clean it with GSF instead of um, using, um, using PNS Brake Buster. Um, the key is to get the dust out. Otherwise, carbon ceramics have a tendency to start squeaking. So, again, I bought this car without the carbon ceramics. I thought it would be a fun project, and it was, to do, uh, to do it where we did uh, uh, CCBs um, as a sort of a OE edition, so I guess it's technically aftermarket, but um, it just bought the OE brakes and because it's not the window sticker doesn't reflect it. But I couldn't find a Hockingheim silver with low miles uh, that had uh, or any forget the mileage that had carbon ceramics on it, and so I wanted this color, and so I found one with steel brakes, and I paid you know fifteen or sixteen thousand bucks less than all the carbon ceramic brake cars. They were all going for one twenty, one thirty. Uh, and so I bought this for 107 and then paid, what, 12 grand for the brakes. Uh, and so it, it worked out to, uh, then I got to do the project, which was, which was fun. Now, you do need to, if you are going to do the swap on a car to carbon ceramics, like an F80 or something like that, you do need to upgrade. You need to use the brake booster that comes with it. It's different. It's a different part number than the steel brake booster. You might be able to get away with it. And then there's some... There's some coding uh, that has to do with, I'm not sure how this works as a hydraulic system, um, but there's some clamping force, uh, maybe something to do with, I don't know if there's any kind of electronic control to the ABS or not, but there is coding that you need to do uh, in the DME to get the, you know, to set these up. So it was a pretty, pretty uh, involved process. And then you have to do all kinds of adjusting to the pedal and the booster. It's a pretty big project. <clears throat> so this is brake buster straight up. So this will be my fifth giveaway. Yeah, first one was, let's see, first giveaway. I need to shorten this up a bit, I guess. The first giveaway, <clears throat> I don't like that. 
You're gonna have to shorten this thing. Oh, that's right. These uh, these don't fit on these little on these brakes. Is it a dust shield? Yep. Oh shoot! I did it again. I use this thing. Dang it. So the first giveaway was the 1M, which was a pretty involved project. Second was uh, the M5, the F10 M5, which was a reasonably involved project. Um, third was the Civic, which was a huge project. You know, that cost a lot of money and took a lot of time. We did an engine swap on that car with my friends at LHT. Um, then we did my beloved E92. It's so hit or miss. Some of these, some of these have some dye in them. See that? And some of them don't. It just depends. Most of them don't. It doesn't dye your hand though, like the old Lake Countries used to. Um, and so, you know, the, the whole concept of a giveaway for me is to get out from underneath the car and share it and make videos and get to experience a car that I maybe otherwise, you know, I, I don't want this car long term. I like it, but I don't love it. Uh, and so I, I don't want this thing long term, but I did want to experience an M2 and have an M2 and, and I wanted to experience an M5 and an L1M. I think in the future we'll probably do some non-BMWs. Um, it's just the BMWs were top on my checklist of, of cars that I really wanted to experience. And uh, I think that, um, I think the whole giveaway process is a, is an experience that I really enjoy doing. And then as long as we've made money on each one of them. So the concept here is that, you know, if I were to try to sell this car, I would sell it for less than, probably less than what I bought it for now. <laughs> and uh, I put all these modifications on it that are worth something, but not in a retail, you know, not in a, you know, a, you know I could sell this car probably for 107, but I need to sell it for more than that in order to recoup the crazy amounts of stuff that I put on this thing. So we've only had one person stay here thus far. Most of the uh, bookings are for later on, but uh, it's been a little much different experience for me this time because I uh, I didn't have as big a project to work on. So it wasn't quite as chaotic. Our next borrower comes, uh, I think, in a couple of weeks. And I'm telling you, there's several weeks available between now, now and uh, November. I think pretty much all of November is booked. Um, you want to come here in October, so I would, you know, it's 5,500 bucks for the rest of the year. Uh, it's going to go up a little bit from there. Um, I would highly suggest you uh, book this place because it is incredible. It's better. Everything is better. Every single thing I've done thus far is better than I'd hoped. So I'm also going to do, I'm not going to do the interior on this video, I'm going to do an uh, interior detail. Which to me, an interior detailing is not really a detailing, it's mainly clean the windows, which I don't do very often. It's, um, uh, I'm going to leather shield the seats, so I'm going to clean the seats and put leather shield on them. Um, that's about the extent. 
still will take several hours to do. So we're gonna make a separate video on that maybe this afternoon or tomorrow, something like that. Uh, Chris and I have taken a little time off the hiking. We were gonna hike today, but we did a nasty uh, fight gone bad workout yesterday and I just wanted to, I freaking slept to like 8.30 today. It's awesome. Every other day I get up at like seven, ready to go. So I said, you know, I, I got, I'm a little ahead on the projects that I had intended to get done. So I did the, uh, this place has those darn blackout shades. Otherwise there's no way I'd be able to sleep that late. Um, the blackout shades black out the whole room and you have no idea what time it is. It's great. I gotta figure out the sheets on this place though, because it's Brooklyn and sheets. They're just not good. I had to take the mattress pad off and I'll just sacrifice this. To hopefully people won't pee themselves on the mattress because um, the darn mattress pad makes the sheet not work. I hate, nothing, I hate nothing more than when the sheet pops off when I'm sleeping, drives me crazy. Washing on Swiss tracks is awesome because you drop your stuff and you don't have, you don't pick up all the dirt and stuff that you would if you dropped it on the floor. So giveaway starts in a couple days and um, we have some really cool stuff. This, uh, this shirt is a new custom color. That's awesome. It's uh, uh, Los Angeles apparel. I forget what color blue they call this, but we have a blue, a green, and, a, and like kind of sort of an off red, like a light red. It's super sick. I always wanted to have, kind of like Rogue Fitness, they have like a hundred different colors of their Rogue Basic shirt. And so I wanted to have the same thing. So we're, we're, we now have 15 different colors or something like that. Um, I'm jumping around all over the place on you. These wheels are so much better than the BBSs. There's spacers on them. They just look so much better. Um, so I'm sticking with these. I rebalanced them. So I have the uh, 3M, you know, uh, 3M uh, wheel weights on them. So they're rebalanced. And these are Pilot Super Sports that have tons of tread on them still. Um, they, uh, that's the way to go. You, you don't, I don't, those BBSs, the problem with them is they're not, uh, they don't have a drop center, so the brakes don't fit. So I had to do it. I hated Acra. Uh, Acra exhaust it looks so great. I mean, look how good that looks. I couldn't, uh, I could, the Remus just kept getting delayed, 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 delayed. And uh, the big thing on this car is the mid pipe. We'll do some flybys, do some exhaust videos for you when I get home. Um, it's, you know, it's an F, it's a uh, S55, so it sounds as good as it's gonna sound. It's, there's some, there's some drone. I wonder if the resonator has to do with that, you know, because Mike's car doesn't drone, and he, but it also could possibly be, I mean, the mid-pipe on this is shorter than it is on the F80. Uh, so this is the Acra equal length mid-pipe, the resonated version, and then the Acra exhaust rear section. And then I have a dollar D-A-H-L-R valve controller. And um, yeah, it's, 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 I mean, I haven't spent a lot of time with it. We just got it here. There's some drone. I need to talk to, uh, I'll talk to um, Active uh, about the, uh, the mid pipe. Should I, can I even switch to the, uh, the, the non-resonator, or the resonator is a separate piece. Like, can I do the, can I add the non-resonated part? Um, just the, 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 the pipes that, that don't have a resonator. Can I add that after the fact or I need a whole new mid pipe to do this? I'm not sure. So that's been my struggle with the S55, with my F80 that I had is the, you know, it sounds like a tractor. This makes it sound quite a bit better.
dare I say, I think it's too loud. You know, it's just, so the, this is like the only car that I had run with the valves closed most of the time. So active resonated equal length mid pipe, Acura rear section. So that's an expensive, you know, eight, nine thousand dollars off, something like that. Then we have the stock wheels, which I come back to because they're great. And uh, I think the black on this color looks the best. The silver was gentleman spec, and I know a lot of you like that, but. Silver on silver to me, you know, it's just not my favorite. I just wanted those wheels because I like the style of them. And so that's three sets, 0 for 3 on VBSs. I bought FIRs for the E92, which I hated. I bought the RIDs for this car, which didn't work. And the offsets were terrible on both of them. And then I bought um, the... E or E87s, the 17 inch version of E88, which were too aggressive an offset for my, for my E36. And so they're all gone. Uh, actually, I have the RIDs. If you want the RIDs, I'll make you a sweet deal on them. Um, they won't fit with these big brakes, but if you had like a, you know, a first gen version of the, uh, like a non-comp version of the F80 or the, this, I mean, they'll fit on the E92, they fit on the, uh, on the F80, but you need massive spacers to make them work. Um, they fit really nicely on this car with a, with a small spacer. I, I think I had a small spacer in the front. And I have some awesome tires on them. I have Cup 2s on them. So if you want, if you like those wheels, I'll make you a sweet deal on it. But keep in mind, they're the combo of the wheels and tires is like 12,000 bucks or something like that. This is pretty fantastic, isn't it, Chris? You're sitting in the air conditioning, you got full control of the light. We've got, um, you know, Bush track flooring to help with the water, so, and then a drain. I mean, man, I could get used to this. I should just move here. We have good water here too, so even the, because of the softener, the uh, filter filter, iron breaker, or softener, or thing we got. I still contend, man, you come up here and you bring your car, it'll make it so much better. Because you, you get kind of worn out on your, with, from your car, from a car perspective in that you come up here to the mountains, everything's dirty. Like the, you know, especially if you go out in the rain and, or like you're here in the fall or the spring, there's the leaves and stuff all over the place. Um, there's probably some leaves on the front of this. Um, you, you know, bugs and stuff like that. It's not nearly as buggy as Florida, but you still hit some bugs and things. And, uh, and then, you know, by midweek, you know, you're just cleaning your windshield. Like, let's say you're staying in a regular Airbnb or a regular hotel or something, and you're here for six, seven, five, six, seven days, and you're out driving around in your car, you go hiking once or twice, your floor mats are all dirty. Um, it, it just wears you out, especially if you have a really nice car that you like and that you keep clean. So every time I'd come up here for the GT Smokies event, I was just, my car would feel trashed. Or like when we, when I brought the GT4 up to Fontana, just feels ruined and you really can't wash it. Um, and they get so dirty that I, I don't, I wouldn't want to do a waterless wash. And if you did go somewhere to wash, they don't have any of the equipment you need. And a lot of times they have bad, hard water. And so, if, if I'm here for a week, so you come here for six, I'd probably wash my car three times, two, three, four times. Especially if you're not like me, I come up here and I've got a hundred projects to work on. You won't have that because you're not having to build the house. You're just coming to enjoy the house. So, 
I think uh, I, I think people underestimate, especially if you haven't spent any time in the mountains, you underestimate how dirty everything gets and how pleasing it is to be able to vacuum out the car and take care of it while you're here. It's super satisfying. And then if you trailer or you drive home, you don't have this big giant clean that you gotta do. You just simply just, you know, dust it off. Or just go back, you know, you like like having a having a washer and dryer here, go home with clean clothes, go home with a clean car. If you're gonna drive home, obviously you're gonna clean it, but it won't be so destroyed that you have like a all day affair because you've maintained it just like normal while you were here. Just like you would if you were at home. Only better because this garage is probably better than what most of us have. It's better than what I got, that's for sure. So I do have um, titanium, the titanium racing uh, wheel studs that I'll put on when I get home. Shoot a video on that. I forgot to do the tires, didn't I? Yeah, the consistency of the press all bottles, I've got a... One of the things I've been working so hard on is to get things done, get projects done. And uh, that's another reason why I stayed here another week is that there's a lot of little projects that I wanted to just get done here and make lists. And I didn't have time to do that because we were so focused on getting the home theater done. And so I stayed a couple days. But one of the things, so, so the press all bottles are nice. I mean, you see them over there. It doesn't look much, does, there isn't a much better looking setup than that. Uh, but we have some work to do. You know, I want some consistency. Uh, I want to be able to offer a warranty on them. Uh, Press all's, you know, open and willing to do that. Uh, as the supply chain, that's another thing that's kind of held me up. As the supply chain gets hopefully fixed here over the next, I didn't drill this bucket. Gets uh, gets dialed in over the next, um, you know, you know, next year or so. I really want to focus on. Improving the bottles, you know, they're like I'd say they're like 80% and People get all mad all the time because they're expecting a hundred percent. I can't make it any more clear They're at like 80% they're Better than anything else, but We still have some work to do to get them to where I want them to be If you do stay here, I'd appreciate you clean out the bucket But you don't have to. Do whatever. Just do the right thing. That's what I say. I always say, do the right thing. Anybody coming to stay here is going to do the right thing. So many things to, to work on that if I slow my roll a little bit, I slow life down, I can focus on things like that. And the way to do that is not take on so many things all at once. That's part of the, my error on this car. I didn't get to spend as much time with it because I had too many darn things going on. So the giveaway won't do as well as it could have because of that. So you're gonna get very heavy M2 content, which will probably make some of you happy over the next month. So that hopefully I don't lose my shirt on this thing.
like this new idea. I do CSL XO on the side glass and then just do Wolfs on the, on the windshield. I like that combo. This is such a good looking car though, don't you think? I mean, with the stance, the uh, custom, the suspension on this thing is incredible. We have a, uh, Uh, 3DM Motorsport custom uh, Olin's road and track system on it. Great. I'm telling you, it's so much better. Eliminate EDC. Eliminate all the stupid modes. You don't need them. Just get a well damped quality system and get rid of all the stupid modes. You don't need that. So, these people, you know, the, there's a little mist in the air here um, that'll drop in a second. But people are like, oh, your cabinets are gonna rust. I'm like, it's freaking powder coated steel. The powder coat, what do you think's gonna happen? Same thing with like the, the, the gym, like, you know, put the stuff outside. Like, in what world, what universe are you from that, you know, it's powder coated cabinets get a little mist, a little humidity on it? What do you think's gonna happen? Nothing's gonna happen. So stupid. It's gonna be just fine. Okay, in 22 years, you might get a rust spot. Well, okay. Well, I think maybe I'll get new cabinets in 22 years from now, which you won't have to. There's a little bit of mist in the air. It'll drop in a second, and the, you know, the air conditioner dehumidifying. So it's fine. What I'm getting at is it, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not an issue. All right, let's fill up our rinse bucket. Let's get our foam cannon ready. We do some GSF. I guess I don't really need the funnel for this since I put the top on here. 150 milliliters of soap. Let's not overfill this. We did a little 12 inch bucket filler because I wanted the shelving to be a little lower. For me, if it was just me here, I would have done it higher um, because I can reach higher, but I think that the, this is a more appropriate height for the average average person. It's one of the few things I did here thinking about anybody else. Most of it, I did everything for me. And everybody can just experience what I like and you can make your determination from there. So the whole powder coated steel thing is such a, you know, when I hear people talking about this or when they make comments on, on videos, I mean, that's such an opinion thing. You know, the opinions, I just don't do it. I don't do opinions very often. If I do, it's a slip up. I don't have intention to make opinions. So I think there's a big difference between your experience and your opinion. You know, an opinion is not based on any sort of fact, and, and most, most oftentimes it's not based on anything. Uh, whereas a, you know, an experience is very different. You know, occasionally, again, I, you know, we all get sucked into a judgment or an opinion on something, which is, I think, a, a mistake. And um, when people are talking about, you know, what are you going to do with the stuff outside and the horse mats and 
the stall mats are going to get mold and you know, of course they're going to get, they're probably going to have mold day one. That's the way it goes. But I've built many gyms, been a part of many CrossFit gyms and have been always been an active member where I'm always participating and helping build the place and donating things and stuff like that. And so I, um, I have a lot of experience where we do mats. We've done mats outside in the rain and the elements. And I've, I've done it where we've relocated and several times and, and moved things around and seen what it looks like under there. And it doesn't matter, it's under there. It's kind of like, it's the same argument. Oh shoot, I did it. It's the same argument with, uh, that I have with um, Swiss tracks. The dirt's under the floor, it doesn't matter. So that's based on my experience, not just not an opinion that I'm just throwing out there. So I've done many rigs out, we've done rigs outside and not none, most that are not, nowhere near the quality of the rogue, you know, powder coating and they're fine. In the elements, this is covered, it's covered and so funny when people talk about you know I'm from Georgia and the humidity here. The humidity here is nothing in comparison to Florida. So I don't want to hear that. You know, so the requisite for the giveaway is that I, I don't want to have a bunch of junk that you wouldn't want because only one person's going to win. And so what about the other thousand people that buy stuff? And uh, I don't want you stuck with a bunch of junk. So you can buy things that you're probably, you'll want. I have various detailing packages, um, you know, it's a bunch of cool like keychain stuff, stuff that you would you would want on your on your key ring. All kinds of Bryce and Mike came up with all kinds of cool stuff. So I think I think you'll like it. And then somebody's gonna get this thing for. Can you imagine? I mean, I couldn't imagine win winning this thing. It's freaking life changing. It'd be insane. It's so good. Right? I mean, it's just such a cool thing to like. Like this car is amazing, and to get it and to have it. And let's let's say you didn't want to pay the tax on it because the way it works is you win it, then you've got to you got to pay tax at some point. You know, um, you know, so for this tax year, and so, uh, you know, maybe let's say, let's say you didn't, you liked it, but you didn't love it. You drive it around for six, eight months, sell it, take or part it out, and uh, pocket a hundred grand. It'd be awesome. Let's get our bucket ready here. I love this little cap. That thing is great for, for this. Let's see our spot list. They, they change this thing so much. Every one I get is different. This one's different than any other ones I ever had. So we're getting closer. We, I'll have some, uh, some tester, not prototype level yet, but um, some test equipment for our deioniz deionization system. Just wait till you see this thing. It's gonna be incredible. I just hope it doesn't cost too much. We're gonna have a TDS meter that shows the incoming TDS and the outgoing TDS. So it'll be a dual meter. Um, 
we'll have the option to do, you know, you can do single tank, dual tank, triple tank, quad tank. We're going to test out doing like carbon filters, high flow uh, RO, uh, different types of bed, mixed bed versus, um, you know, single type of bed material for, for, um, for deionization. Uh, I'm going to have all kinds of information and data. I just think that all the other systems on the market, they just haven't done the work that we're going to do. Joe and I are going to do, and then Mike, Mike F and Tommy and myself are all going to be testing and playing with different, different versions and really make something amazing. Just wait till you see what I'm coming up with. It's super cool. And I'm, once we get a little further along here, I'm going to start to share the details, you know, share what, what my findings are, share what it's going to, you know, rough, show you the renders, what it's going to look like. And then we'll have mock-ups and then we'll have prototype, mocked up prototypes, and then we'll get into production. And it's not that far away. We're only, I would say six months out would be a fair estimate. And we're gonna make a retrofit system for everybody who has CRs. But if you wanted to swap it out, you could do a direct, a direct swap. We'll make a direct swap kit. You know, because we've sold thousands of these custom install systems. And so I just like I know here I'd like to be able to just pull this out and put in the new system. And assuming it's much better. And so the volume, the capability of the, be able to pass much more water. And then I'd also like to be able to do systems that are uh, focused on certain types of water. So, you know, I, I know like Arizona has, you know, notoriously hard, I think calcium heavy water. And so we'll have like the ability, this would be the long-term goal, the ability to in the, in the um, drop down to sort of pick and choose what type, you know, what type of water you think you have. And we'll devise ways for people to test it and figure out what they have so that way they can, you can build the best system. Like I'd envision that, you know, some, some types, some forms of water would do better if we did a two stage system where you did rever high flow reverse osmosis. And then, so you'd, you'd have to spend the money up front. You know, a, a high flow or, or RO membrane is probably like six or $800 on its own. But if you had the combination of that and DI, you could, you could possibly end up, even though you'd have more upfront costs, your DI would last, you know, 10 times longer and you, you'd have the possibility of, even though you're spending more upfront long term, you're spending a lot less. I don't know. We're going to figure all this out. And I'm sure, you know, there's water filtration experts out there that know this stuff, but no one's really done it for the They've done it for car wash application, but not the home garage application that we're focused on. And then this system, I'd love to be able to make it modular where the same system could be used for whole home water treatment as well. They can be installed yourself. You don't have to have the middleman in there. It's just things I'm working on, thinking about. What else have I done to this? I need to get a radar detector, so we'll do that as well for this. The window tint's been done. There's not really anything to do with the interior because the CS has a great, anything you might think of updating or upgrading, I guess you could say, has already been done. These little canards here, these little side blades have grown on me. 
They work better with the black wheels. They kind of disappear more. With the silver wheels, it didn't work very well. Now they kind of blend in better. Yeah, this thing is it's pretty darn cool. We'll get some driving footage of it. We'll get some, uh, some flybys. And then the car looks so much better because the Acker gets rid of the dirty diaper. You know, exhaust is, sits much higher. You don't see it hanging down like a pair of old balls hanging off the back of a bowl or something. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. We've got a new prototype of the super soft version of this. I have it at home. I'm gonna start playing with it. Talk to my friends at Sky's the Limit and uh, Microfiber Madness about how it's, how the pad and, and the, uh, the other cool thing is that, and hopefully we can make it in this size too, or this style, is uh, make a smaller version of this. Like right now, doing the lowers, I would like us a little small pad like maybe half the size of this. <clears throat> this is great. I thought I drilled these, I guess I didn't. I didn't drill holes in this. I could have sworn I did. I guess not. Let's go DI. Turn this off. So this would be the perfect way to do it. Wash, wash with you know normal softened, decent water, so the whole house is softened. And then we're gonna rinse with DI. Remember the requisite, you come to my house, you gotta wrap the hose up properly. <laughs> People get so mad at that. Oh, well, I'm gonna pay $5,000 and have to wrap up the hose. Uh, yeah, you should wanna do that. When the hose is new like this, it's still a little grabby. Once you beat it up a bit, it's a little, smoother and look as good when it gets smoother. Hey, I don't have a PP plug here, I need to get one. I like that, I like having my buckets done back into position before I even dry the car. It's that process, like 
Michelle doesn't do this process. Like when you're cooking, like I like to clean along the, you know, throughout the process. She thinks I'm nuts. You know, not just make a big explosion mess and have to clean it all up at the end. I like to you know, just keep it, keep the whole process organized. Same thing when I'm washing a car, put things away. You know, it, it's kind of hard to do that when you're outside, but like in this garage, the way we have it set up, it's super simple. I bought some uh, Walker's razor. These are like a you know, gun range it's headphone set for ear protection. This is the 580, which I think is the best one still, based on all the testing and use. Uh, and then this is the uh, Apex Air. I gotta clean, I'm gonna leave this thing out because I gotta clean it. I'm gonna clean it up because we've been using it around the property. Um, we're now a dealer for these. So it doesn't really help you at all by buying it from me, but it certainly helps me. So Ego 580, get the, um, the five amp hour batteries is the way to go and start to build your ego system. I'm telling you this stuff, like there, the fan is amazing to have. I find myself using that thing all the time. The fan, the light, the, you know, and then if you're doing your own yard, I mean, to have all the yard tools are great. It's just a good looking car. This thing had a V8 in it, oh my gosh. Basically, if it had any engine but the one it has, I'd be all about it. Man, just do a swap. <laughs> you can't do it. The swaps get janky. So, I think uh, my latest lessons have been to, I need to buy it. When I get a car, and I'm doing it again, I got two cars coming at the same time. Hopefully they come reasonably far apart. But I like having a car, like washing this right now, the experience is so great, but it hasn't been this great for most of my ownership of the car. So, you know, what I used to do before YouTube is I'd get a car, I'd take the whole week off, or, you know, or, or a long, long weekend, and I would just immerse myself in it and get it, get it all dialed in, you know, get it all set up. And so, I'm making that this transition to, I've been saying this over and over again, to 100% to proactivity. The paint on this thing is okay. You know, this I've been saying this for years. You know, the wrong PPF can cause more harm than it does in protecting. And so, this darn thing has a bunch of stress marks, like stress to the uh, plastics from the PPF install and removal. And so it has like little, uh, like, I don't know how to explain it other than like stretch marks. Like this section here that was under the PPF is just not, it's just not right. So it's not the, not always a positive. There are, there are cons to doing it. Now, if you get really good stuff and a really good installer, and you know for a fact the installer's good, and you get quality you know, film, it can be a much, much greater pro than any con. Like my, uh, my Brewster Green touring, GT3 touring that's coming, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna PPF that. The other key is never do, never ever do half panels. Do the whole thing. You don't want any lines in the panel. Dang, look how good this thing looks in here. This Cree lighting, this color, the kind of aggressive look of this thing. The size of it is a good size. Everybody always comes up to my people in my cars when I'm not in it. I must not look very approachable because that never happens to me. So remember, attack your bugs now if there's any bug guts left. Don't chase them while you're cleaning. See this bug right here? 
we got most of it off when we're doing the wash, but then you'll finish it off in the drying when there's no more sand or grit left on the surface. So I would think, so I took all the, the crappy PPF off of this thing and I didn't redo it. Um, like if I owned this car, I wouldn't do PPF on it. I'm torn on what I'm gonna do on the G80. I might just do high impact areas. I'm not sure yet. What my plan on the G80 I've been working on, you know, my difficulties driving. And so my goal is to be able to go to the Performance Delivery Center and drive the car home. Because I'm gonna get it in November and the whole, this house is booked like the whole darn month. I was planning on bringing it straight here. And so what I'll probably do is take it home to Florida, do all the modifications and things there, and then uh, and drive it up here. And then what I should probably do, by the time I get that car up here and working and in service, I should probably order another one so that way I can get it in six months or so, six or eight months, and then swap them and do a giveaway. You know, I'd like to do a, a, like a yearly giveaway on a G80 or whatever the current version the M3 is and then use that giveaway car here as the Turo rental, and I, and I figured out Turo um, on how to do it. You set up a you know, commercial Turo account. It's just gonna be easier for the first few cars. Eventually, I'd like to have my own, you know, set up my own rental company and get my own commercial insurance. Because I think Turo is gonna jerk me around, you know, when it, when, it, when it comes to actually needing to make a claim. But they have an option to do a high deductible $2,500 deductible and um, $2,500 deductible and a 90% payout. So if I did, let's say I did 1100 bucks for the week here, which would be dirt cheap. What did I pay for the, uh, I paid 1600 bucks for the week for that Panamera, you know, just a stock Panamera work with my friends at IND and my friends at PSI, get all the, and my friend uh, uh, Brian Kiefer from Keys, Keys Motorsports, and do a lot of cool stuff to each car. If you think I'm in love with this place now, wait till I get back on the road. Like I'm here, I know I, many of you know this story, but I'm here in the mountains. The Richard B. Russell is four miles from me right now and I can't do it. I have a freaking panic attack on the side of the road. And it's, it's here, it's right there. Blood Mountain is right there. Oh, it's so frustrating. And my car is here. When that happens, I've got to have a 16 GT3 RS here. So interior detail we'll do probably tomorrow. I'm gonna do a specific modifications video. And then I'm gonna do a, um, I'm gonna sit down for the first time. I'm gonna do some extensive research. Actually, I should convince someone with an M2 comp to come to, I should wait and do that at home. And, uh, have someone with an M2 comp come up and an M2. I'm sure we could, I'm sure I've got some buddies that have those. Bring the car to, uh, to OGHQ and we'll do a comparison video. I wonder what's gonna happen with cars and the you know, inflationary pricing that we've experienced. I think part of this cycle, this current cycle of you know car appreciation and 
this sort of car pricing boom because of lack of supply, just all the factors coming together, lack of the su supply and availability, and it's just general inflation and too many dollars chasing too few goods. Um, I think that this has been the inflection point. It was already coming, but I think this was the inflection point of the, the modern classic. You know, the GT cars, the M cars, like the E36, the E92, the E46. Um, this was the inflection point that, that, the, you know, that the car market needed to justify the pricing of, say, you know, 100,000 bucks for a really nice E46 M3. Um, you know, eighty, ninety thousand dollars for what's becoming more and more limited, low mile, really nice E ninety twos, um, and just you know, nice lower production. I mean, you know, M threes aren't really lower production, but lower production model cars. You know, nine nine seven GT threes and things like that. This is the inflection point to make all those cars modern classics that make them have appreciation value um, you know for so long think about like the e36 i mean well, chris what did you buy your e36 for uh that was around 2004 and it was 17.5 yeah so 17.5 and 04 for a you know e36 i paid what 42 for mine in you know a year and a half ago and now that car's probably 60 right and so and so these, the, these cars, you know, and like this car, this is an $86,000 stickered car that, you know, sells for 120. I haven't looked at what they're selling right now, but the limited modern classic, if you will, and if not classic yet, future classic, is, um, you know, this, this we, we, we are like unlikely to see you know, depreciated, you know, even if there is a bubble in the car world, if it's not inflationary and here to stay, when the supply catches up and demand is very clear, very clearly going to slow, do um, the cars like this not depreciate? Do they not um, see a, a softening? Do cars like a GT3, GT3 RS, do they not? See, you know, people are paying two hundred and seventy, two hundred eighty thousand dollars for a, you know, for a two hundred ninety, three hundred thousand dollars for a two thousand nineteen GT three RS. I mean, does that stay? Does that go away? And I would, I don't know. Does a nine nine seven GT three RS that's now three hundred grand, does it stay at three hundred grand? Or when we return to some semblance of normalcy in the car world, does it does it go back to 200? I suspect not. I mean, that's my whole life goal. My goal is to be able to buy whatever car I want at whatever price it takes to get it whenever I want. And I'm not really all that close to that, but... That's my, that's what I'm working for. I was asking myself the other day, like what, what's the point of all this? All right, let's take a look at the engine bay. They had the thing all torn apart to get the ECU re reset up. I did my first deal in crypto. I sold, uh, sold my TE37s for uh, Bitcoin. The guy paid in Bitcoin, that was kind of fun. He hadn't done it before, I hadn't done it before. So we figured out how to transfer funds on Coinbase. I'm gonna have to wait for the engine to cool down and I'm gonna do a, I'll do a proper cleaning next time I wash it. I plan to do a, at least a bi-weekly wash and talk on this thing. I like these blue, a little bit, just a subtle little bit of blue accent in here. You'll get so mad, a ricer mod. No, it, you know, you need a little something, just a little bit. 
there's a fine line between ricer and proper. Yeah, I'm going to have to wash out the engine bay next time I clean this. There's just some crap on it. I'm sitting at PSI. All right, let's dress the tires and wipe off the wheels and wrap her up. So my E36 steering rack, pretty sure I got a bad rack from the rack doctor. So I'm going to have to tear apart the E36 here when I get home. Could be a power steering pump. That's the one thing we didn't replace was the power steering pump. I don't think that's a common point of failure on those cars, so we didn't mess with it. We did all the, all the, the, um, what's it called? Tubing, piping, hoses. I couldn't think of the word. Um, so we did all that, but I didn't replace the pump. Well, I'm kind of regretting it. So, but uh, full detailing series, paint correction series on the E36 coming. Lots of detailing stuff. Lots of pressure washing stuff. I plan to make a bunch of videos on Krenzels and things like that. Porsche should be here in a few months. It's in production. That, uh, that car's gonna be insane. I'm gonna baby that like it's my newly born child. I'm excited for that. I'm excited to pamper something. Well, I guess I've been pampering my E92 as well, but. But my plan, the E92, the GT3 Touring will be my babies. They get special treatment. And then I've got a Lotus. What's the new Lotus? I'm, yeah, that Amira. I've got a Lotus Amira on order. So I should have that sometime. Not, not this year, but maybe the following year. Yeah, I would like to get an NSX, but that would be a giveaway car. The, the second gen NSX. That's one thing I can pretty much bank on is the Type S that everybody has listed for $400,000, $400,000. Those will be selling for one sixty dollars at some point too, so I'd love to get one of those. All right, last wheel. Last wheel is always the most satisfying because then I'm done. Especially since I know I'm going to clean the interior. I'm always second guessing. Oh, should I do the interior? Or should I do? Um, I know I'm not doing the interior right now, so I can uh, let me go work on some projects. Do a little organizing here. Oh, I'm going to mount the. Uh, I did Google Cams here, so I'm going to go mount that Google camera. I've got to mount the. Uh, couple of pictures. Um, I want to come in here in the garage tonight and just kind of tinker around. Tomorrow we're going to go on a hike, easy hike I think. And then um, Mike and I are going to be doing all the lighting in the house. So all the swapping all the recess fixtures. He's coming back. We're going to fix the cedar around the windows that the, uh, that the carpenter bees destroyed. The TV should be here soon so we can finish in the home theater and actually watch a few movies in there. It'll be fun. Lots of fun to be had. And then I'll probably do a vlog of the GT Smokies trip. Adam's coming. Adam LZ. All my friends, Sean and Ayer and... Meeker and all my friends are coming to that. It'll be fun to go to that. And then I, gosh, I'm, I'm going to do everything in my power to be back here in the spring at that event, driving my own car. That's the goal. Preferably a 16 RS that's here at Helen. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, as always, stay tuned for more crazy. Uh, giveaway starts in a few days. Uh, I could really use your help to, that I, I don't know, so I can do another giveaway. So I, I'm certainly very appreciative when you guys buy stuff, but I need you to buy a lot of stuff. Uh, so that way I don't lose my shirt on this thing. Um, so I can do another one and feel good about it. So uh, interior detailing vid coming here shortly.
But yeah, anyway, thanks for being here and um, we'll see you in the next one. See you soon. Thank <laughs> you.